Hello, this is Sickle Yield, and I'm here with another Render Like a Pro feature. This specific one was requested by VixDaz on the Daz forums. Today we're looking at the main promo from Knocked Out for Genesis 3. Again, specific request. This is an older render. The product's been out for a long time. I would do things a little differently probably now than I did then, but at least you can get an idea of what I did and how I set up these lights. The main difference that there's going to be, I'll just add a note here, is that in the original I used these cactus prop freebies from Transpond on Runtime DNA, which are no longer available anywhere that I could find, and apparently somehow I still had the OBJ files but not the textures, so I'm just going to run a quick preview here so you can see that you can see the, tac the cactus props are still there, but I had to sort of retexture them with shaders. So that's going to be different, but as near as I can tell, the lighting should be all the same. Let's, uh, let's pull that up. Okay, there's the final product on the left. There's the viewport render on the right. They're pretty much the same. So looking at the composition of this scene, the poses that the characters are in are from the set that's being advertised, the knocked out set. That's where this dart is from, and that's where the dart gun is from that the female character is holding. Her outfit is the blazer outfit by Nikki Sitez. His outfit is the biker bandit outfit by Anna Benjamin and Nikki Sitez. I think Anna did the textures there. And he doesn't have any hair. Oddly enough, I'm going to switch to perspective view with the drop down up at the top here. She actually has a hair. The Dax hair. I'm not sure why. I think in my original version of the promo, I intended to show her face, but then I decided to zoom in more on him because I felt it was a better, better advertisement for the product. The car here is Maximum Madness by DZ Fire. Love it. Love his work. All of these dust pieces are from Fast Fog, the first Fast Fog set by me, and they just had the dust texture on them that came with that. The set is... Over here on the left in my scene tab, I've grouped the props together. It's Ambush Alley. I don't remember if all of the rocks I used came with that or if I used rocks from elsewhere. I can't really tell from the names in the scene, but I've instanced a lot of them to add more rocks to just the part of the scene that I wanted to show. And as I mentioned, the cacti are from Transpond. I haven't been able to find a lot of other good barrel cacti. So if anyone knows of any great like barrel cactus props, please uh, comment below. I don't remember what the case she's holding is from. It says Kruger, so I assume it came with one of the gun products that I own, but honestly, at this point, it's been a long time and I'm not quite sure. The important thing here, as in every render always, is lighting. So I have two lights in the scene, the sun lamp, and a contrast light that is white. Now I'm gonna pull way back out here. The sun lamp is over here on the upper right. Let's look at the settings of that. It's just at the default temperature of 6500. It's up pretty warm. And in this case, I've set the diameter to 5 and 5 to make it a sharper point. Because, as I've mentioned before, and no doubt will mention again, the smaller the light is, the sharper the shadows that it casts. And I wanted pretty sharp shadows on this. You can see in the final render that that light is shining directly onto this unconscious man and casting shadows of the gun and the woman's other thigh onto her legs so that she is slightly more in shadow than he is. And again, the purpose of that was to draw attention to the product that's being advertised. But there is a second light in the scene, sort of for Phil here, and that is my white contrast light up here on the right. And again, it's just at the default temperature, and I think it's a bit less bright than the other one. I'm going to run the preview here again and turn those off in turn so you can see what the effect was of each light separately. A huge majority of my best renders are just a couple of mesh lights or a couple of point lights with one set up as a key and one set up as a rim or contrast. So if I turn off the contrast light, Give it a second to redo the preview there. There we go. You can see that she's even more in shadow now. You can't really see the car or the dust in the background at all. 
and he's lit with starker shadows, which I didn't like the look of. I wanted to soften the shadows a little bit, so that's why I have this contrast light. Now the contrast light itself isn't very bright, so if I have that on and the sun lamp off, I think the whole scene's probably going to look fairly dark, but let's see, let's see how it turns out. It is. The whole scene is fairly dark, and it's not super starkly lit as far as the shadows go, because the purpose of that was to just sort of act as a bit of a fill and make sure that there was enough light in the scene to show everything that I wanted to show. So, very simple, just two lights. And let's see what our environment settings are. At this period, I think that I probably was just using a intensity at one and two. I was. I had the environment here at the intensity that it came with. And this is one of Dimension Theory's Skies of Irradiance HDRs, one of the sunny ones specifically. And it looks like I have that set to two and the environment intensity set to one, which again is the settings that it came with. It's not a tremendously bright one. If I set this to scene only, so that the effect of that doesn't show, you can see that it is also acting as sort of a soft fill in the scene. So I'll set that back to dome and scene, so that the effect of my HDRI is showing. There we go. And then I just rendered this to 1000 by 13 again, because that's the default size for renders for promos. And in fact, at this period, we were only allowed to do either 1000 by 1300 or 1300 by 1000. And the main promo had to be 1000 by 1300. Those were the only options. We're allowed more flexibility now than this, which is fun, which is fun. Now, another note here on the tone mapping. This is something I haven't really been doing much lately, but at the period when I made this render, I was really invested in the concept of Sunny 16 tone mapping, because that's something that you use in photography where the exposure and the f-stop are both set to 16. And that was supposed to be the best for rendering in a sunny environment. So the result of that with the exposure set that high is that the lights had to be pretty bright to compensate because that actually makes the scene overall generally dimmer. So that's why my contrast light is set to, looks like 800,000 lumens. And my bright sun lamp is set to 3 million lumens. That's something that I probably wouldn't do now. And the reason that I did brightness and contrast post work is, as you can see from my render settings here, I did not do any canvases. I didn't use the canvas system at all. I did use a bloom filter, it looks like, a very slight one, with a threshold of 35,000. So that's probably what was showing in here that wasn't visible in my preview. You can see the bloom effect on her shirt a little bit and on the liquid that's inside of the dart. Otherwise, it's relatively subtle with a threshold set that high and the radius set that low. But I did do that. I set the bloom filter on. I set the threshold to 35,000, and I left the radius at 0 0.05. So that's how I did the render. That's how the lighting was set up. Those are the props that I used. There's nothing special about the composition here. Normally, um, when we do a promo render, we try to not compose down into the right because it drags the eye off the screen. In this case, I did it anyway because I'm selling a product that involves a lot of prone or supine bodies. I needed to draw attention to a prone or supine character. It's very hard to do that and pull focus to the upper right side of the screen without being zoomed way out. So in this case, that's not a decision that I regret, but it's certainly not something I would do for every render. That's all of our discussion for today. Thank you for watching and happy rendering.